Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another collection video. In this video, we are going to be talking about my setting powders and all of them that I own. And these are all of my loose setting powders. Actually, I think they're all of my setting powders because I don't really have any other types of setting powders. Um, I mainly use a loose setting powder, but if you haven't already seen my foundation collection video and also my concealer collection video, then make sure you guys check at the end of this video or the card, which will probably be like right up here. Click on the little I button and it'll drop down to show you both of those videos. So that way you guys can check out those if you haven't seen them already. But if that is something that you're interested in, then please keep on watching. So there are a lot of things, a lot of products that I really, really, really enjoy when it comes to makeup. I enjoy foundation, I enjoy concealer, I enjoy lip gloss, and I enjoy setting powders. Um, especially when people are like, ooh, this is the best, like I've never, you know, anything like that. I'm just like, ooh, okay, let me go and buy that. So I don't have too many of these. A lot of these I use for clients, a lot of these I use for myself. Um, but like I said in the other videos, I am a makeup artist, so I will have more than the standard person. But I will also make sure to tell you guys my top five at the end of this video. So make sure you guys stay tuned to the end of the video. But this is what I keep my setting powders in. This is a um, large athletic shoe box. It's an acrylic box from the container store. I think this was 18 to 24 bucks. I can't remember exactly the price but it is it's just the best thing ever there's also a divider down the middle so right down the middle i have a divider which has one half concealer one half setting powders but most of these products or most of these powders i keep in this drawer specifically because i grab them the most so let's just get into them so the first setting powder up top is the kylie cosmetics setting powder this is in the shade yellow It'll be a trend with these setting powders, but I really like a um, like a yellowy kind of like color. So this is not as yellow, but it's a little more between like a yellow and a translucent. So it's a nice mix. But I like a really like finely milled setting powder. And this Kylie one, um, besides the Beauty Bakery one, are probably like two of the most finely milled powders that I really, really, really enjoy. But this one is, it's just a great powder overall. You get 0.35 ounces in this, so quite a bit. And when you think about setting powders, um, most of them aren't meant to like bake with them, so not meant to use a lot of product. You're meant to just take us either a powder puff or a setting powder brush and just use that to set underneath of your eye or you know wherever you apply the concealer, but it's mainly used to set those type of products. But this is a really, really, really good product, good powder, and I use it a ton. So next is my OG fave. This, if you've been following me for longer than two years, you know that this was my jam back in like 2015, 2016. This is a Sasha Buttercup setting powder. This is like their yellowy powder, and this is the flash back friendly powder. So Back when baking became a really big thing and highlighting to the gods became a really big thing, the whole Kim K um, highlighting and contouring, they like the banana powder kind of family became like the must have in the beauty community. So um, with this, this was like the first like brown skin fran friendly setting powder because most of them were just way too light. Like they were like that Ben Nye banana powder light and this was like one of the first ones that came out that was like Something that someone my skin tone or darker could use and set their under eye with, but this is a really, really, really great product. I actually just opened this one up, and this has 1.25, so you get a crap ton of product in here. This retails for like 25 bucks, I think this one's like around the same, but you get almost, you get like almost three times the amount in here than you do in here. So, yeah. So next is the Morphe setting powder. This is their bake and set powder. This has 0.31 ounces, so less than the Kylie Cosmetics one, but this is also a little cheaper. So this is in the shade Banana Rich. I have Banana Rich. I have, sorry, I have a crap ton of these because they actually sent them to me in PR. I have Banana, which is almost gone. So I started going into Banana Rich because Banana 
was my favorite shade, but it's just like literally almost gone. <laughs> and then they came out with uh, Translucent Rich, which is like an orangey kind of shade. So if you're way darker, this would be a really good shade. And then they have um, Translucent. So this is the bulk of my setting powders, these four right here. I'm so grateful and so thankful that Morphe sent these to me um, because most of the powders I have bought myself. Actually, all, yeah, most, yeah, most of them I bought myself, but these did get sent to NPR and they are affordable. You can find them at Ulta. Um, the, obviously, Banana was most used and then um, my Translucent is pretty used up as well. Banana Ridge and then this one I don't really touch as often, but I keep it in here just in case I have darker skin clients that come through and want to get the makeup done. So this powder is the Black Opal Deluxe Finishing Powder. This powder is really, really nice. This is 03 Medium and I use this on my really deep skin clients because it's not super, 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 super orangey red. I don't like that in setting powders and a lot of the deeper darker setting powders are just that orangey red kind of consistency and I just don't think they're that cute so um, this one is the one that I use the most this has um, it's one ounce so still not as much as my Sasha but it has a good bit of powder and it'll last you so long this is another really finely milled powder as well it's just so silky and it sets really nicely and it's definitely my favorite for my deeper darker skin tone clients it's pretty amazing so this powder is really, really good. And when I first got this, this was sent to me. This is um, Beauty Bakery uh, Flower Powder. Uh, this is in yellow. And when I first got this powder, I was obsessed. Like, I mean, I was using it every single time I did my makeup. It It's that yellow kind of pale yellow consistency. So it gives me a brighter look. So when I really want to look snatched and I really want to look highlighted and I really want to have my under eye like really pop i will use the yellow shade like this like lighter kind of shade and this powder is so fine like it's so silky and fine this is a really good product and i would recommend it to any and everyone and beauty bakery has really good shade range i haven't tried their foundation or their concealer yet but those are definitely on my list there's just so many products that i just can't keep up and i just can't buy everything um but this powder is so the next one I have a double of as well. Actually, I have like a quadruple because I have the um, the metallic one that they came out with. Or not metallic, but the like shimmery one they came out with. This is the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder in Translucent and Translucent Medium Deep. I was so excited when this one came out because this is a cult fave. When I'm doing clients that are lighter skin, like white or, um, or Hispanic, I will use this setting powder and it is just thebomb.com. I don't know why people, some people don't like this product. I think it's a really, really, really good setting powder. Um, but I was disappointed with the translucent medium deep. I feel like they need to come out with like more of a banana e shade. I feel like that would be better because this one is just way too dark. This is a powder that I would use to set my foundation or to set my face before foundation. So if I'm going in with, um, like a powder before foundation type of routine. If I'm gonna be out all day and I need to stay matte and not have oil break through or whatever, I'll use something like this before it. I think that's what Jackie Ina does. But besides the fact, it's just really, really, really like, like rich, like orangey kind of rich. And I just, I just can't deal with it. I just can't, but it stays in my, in my drawer just in case I have a darker skin client that, you know, might need something a little more rich. The infamous Pat McGrath Labs setting powder. So I ordered the bundle, I think it was. Yeah, I ordered the bundle, I think it was 85 bucks. So setting powder and um, setting powder, more than that, it was 125 or something like that. The setting powder, primer, and the foundation. And this powder went along with my foundation. I wanted a lighter shade powder, but I didn't want to, I, I wanted a better deal. So I just bundled it. But in hindsight, I would go back and get the lighter shade powder because this powder is really, really, really nice. I just once again got too dark of a shade. This is medium deep four and it's really pretty on deeper, darker skin tone, but it's just too orange. So I use this on a client and um, when I use this powder, I'll use it sparingly because you don't need a lot. It sets really nice and matte, but it's just way too like clay, kind of like color. It's just not very flattering even on darker deeper skin tones so um yeah but 
That's just my opinion, okay? I do really like this powder, but I need a shade for myself so I can really enjoy this powder because if I had a shade for myself, I would use this powder up and down. Do you hear me? <laughs> so next is the Too Faced uh, Born This Way setting powder. This is in tra translucent medium. Um, I like this powder. I just don't like the sifter. So this has like a lid here and you have to kind of like sift it out and I don't like that. Like the other ones, it does have a sifter, but it doesn't have a cap in it. If you turn it over and tap it out, a lot will come out, but I just haven't like broken off this lid part to do so. But that's the only downfall with this powder. This powder is very mattifying. It does say that it has like some like that coconut, like the Born This Way has like coconut water infused in it. It does say that it has that, but, or claim that it has that, but Personally, for me, I thought this was a pretty mattifying powder when I um, did the review on this in the foundation, but I just never picked this up. Personally, it doesn't fit in my in my drawer, so I just leave it in my closet, but I pulled it out because it is a loose setting powder, but I just don't use it too often. So the next two are CoverGirl powders. This is the CoverGirl True Blend Minerals Loose Mineral Powder. I remember when CoverGirl had the loose mineral powder and it was just like the translucent shade back back in the day like way back in the day and now the, to have other shades is really great so this is still translucent i've never opened it i've never used it i have a ton of translucent setting powders for my lighter skin clients so i don't you know open too many this is the banana shade and i have used this one and i do really like this one this powder is so silky it's so fine it's another really 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 great product it's also a drugstore so it's not too too expensive it's not gonna break the bank but it is that light kind of like mix between banana rich and like translucent setting powder. So um, if you're a little like, if you're my skin tone and don't want to look super bright and super highlighted, then something like this isn't going to look very great on you. But if you like to look like Kim K bright under eye highlight, then this is going to be great. I really do like this product. I just don't rub it out too often. I'm late for real. I'm late because I need to. And honestly, you guys going through these, um, collections has really like gotten me to be like wow I've had that for a while and I haven't um, used it like I need to use it I need to try it you know so thank you guys for recommending this because it's definitely eye-opening to see everything that I have and to be like wow you need to use some of your products that you have and stop ordering them so this next powder is the black radiance true complexion um, loose setting powder this is in the it doesn't have a shade it's just it's just a loose powder this is another really great product um i don't remember why i didn't like this product but i do remember doing a review on this and i don't remember why i didn't like it I can't excuse me i can't remember why or or i liked it and i don't, I don't remember why but i don't remember but i do need to use it a ton of product in this actually this only has 0 0.70 0 0.70 ounces so not a lot the cover girl has 0.63 i didn't mention that cat mcgrath has um 0.17 not a ton and then the born this way has 0.56 so you definitely get the most from sasha 25 bucks for 1.25 that's a crap ton um laura mercier has it's one out so this is the second best but I thought this would have been like a ton of product because it's, oh, it's shade banana because um, it's a really big, like wide product, but that just goes to show that the wider the product doesn't mean the more the product, but it's just, it's just a big overall container. But I'm going to try this again because I don't remember what my thinking was of it, but it usually just sits towards the back of my container, my little box over here and that it just stays there. So I don't really know. So this is a really silky powder too. This is the original shade, so it's like white. I never use this for myself, but my really, really, really fair ladies that I have come and get their makeup done, this is a setting powder that I'll use, and it's amazing. Because even though this says translucent, this says translucent, it still, for very fair girls, can have like a slight tint to it, and it's still way too, um, you could say vanilla-y like I need a stark white powder so this comes in handy it's very good it's a, a micro nice powder and it locks in makeup um, um 16 hour wear and it's smooth to mattify complexion and it is very very smooth 
and it does match the complexion. So definitely something that if your client has um, very dry skin to not use as baking, to use with a brush and set it that way. But that is a really, this is a really good product. And I need a shade for me. I think I did have a shade for me, but it wasn't like a banana or banana rich. So it was like a tan or something. And so I just gave it away, I think. Um, this is the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores Press Powder. Um, this powder is really, really, really great for setting, um, powdering before foundation. So I set my nose and like my T area and then I'll apply my foundation. This powder is great for that. It's supposed to like blur the pores and all that. I haven't really experienced that, but I do like this powder just for the fact that I can apply it before my foundation and I won't have like any flashback or anything like that and it'll keep me matte. Then I have the Makeup Forever. This is just a sample I've had for like six years, honestly. It needs to go in the garbage, but I just use this to set my eye, so my concealer. Um, but as you guys know, I use the NYX one, which is over there. This is just something that was sitting in here. And then last but not least, this is the newest powder. This is the Makeup Revolution Bake and Blot. This is in Banana Deep. I used it in today's video. The only thing is it's a pressed powder and I'm not the biggest fan of pressed powder, but I can, um, I've used my sponge and it works really, really good like that. I do like it like that. So first I'll use a setting brush and I'll set under and then I'll take my sponge in the areas where I want to bake. So along the side of my nose and things like that and apply the powder like that and it looks really good. This powder was only like, I don't know, like eight bucks or something, but six or eight bucks, it wasn't very expensive at all. And it looks really nice on the skin. So yeah, I think I look, I think I look really good with it. I think it turned out really nice. So yeah, you guys, that completes my setting powder collection. Um, it's, 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 it's excessive for, you know, a certain amount of people that maybe don't think that I need all of this or don't have all of this. Um, there is a total of 20 powders. <laughs> I have a total of 20 setting powders, you guys. So it's a crap ton, but as I mentioned, I have clients, I have different skin tones, the variation of different people that come to me to get their makeup done. So it's just, you know, they all get used. Trust me, maybe except a few, like the translucent CoverGirl one and the uh, Black Radiance one I don't think I've used since I literally got it in PR, but other than that, you guys, my top five setting powders would be the Beauty Bakery Flower Powder. This is probably like my number one. Um, the Kylie Cosmetics setting powder would probably be my number two. The Morphe set Bacon set is probably three. Um, the Pat McGrath. Uh, what is this? The Sublime Perfect Setting Powder would probably be four. And then finally would probably be just based off of um, how silky it is, it would be the Derma Blend Professional. Um, my honorary mention is the Sasha. The Sasha isn't the most silky uh, setting powder, but it is the most useful for me. Um, like I get the most uses out of it. but. Um, especially over the years. I've had this one the longest. This is my cult favorite, but um, just based off of the formulation and how it applies and everything, these are probably my top five. So Derma Blend, especially for my lighter skin tones, this is a really, really silky powder. I really love that. It's just like fine. This one is also another fine one, but I just need a shade for me so I can actually use it. The Pat McGrath and then the Morphe one is a really nice formula as well. And I, she, this is practically gone. I used the hell out of that powder. And then these two are probably tip for tat. The uh, Beauty Bakery is probably a little more fine than the Kylie, but both of these are really, really, really nice products. And I really, really enjoy them. So those are my top five. Um, I would love to know what your top five uh, setting powders are. And like in the concealer video, somebody was like five. I have like one. And I completely understand, you guys. I completely understand. I have been there. I understand having like two concealers and it being like, well, I only have two concealers. So I can only tell you my top two. But however many you have, let me know what your favorite is. If you only have two setting powders, let me know what those two setting powders are and let me know what you love about them, especially if it's not one that I have, like the Kudubi. Huda Beauty one. A lot of people have been saying that that's their fave. I would love to know. Please let me know. I love you all. I will catch you guys in the next video. And thank you guys so much for watching. 
Let me know what you guys want to see next. We still have setting sprays. We have primers. We have lipsticks. We have lip glosses. We have liquid lipsticks. Like, we have lip liners. We, woo, my collection is huge. When we get to the lip products, we're going to have to separate them by, like, formula. Because I just have way too many lip products. And then the palette video, I'm dreading that one. That one's absolutely last because I'm going to be here literally for two hours. It's going to be a two-hour video, so I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.